Hey guys, so I'm just going to be doing some supplementary videos for EMB339 Intro to Robotics. Uh, this first one will be about transformation matrices, coordinate frames and reference frames, etc. And basically understanding how that all works. Now the first thing you got to get a kind of got to get across is that things are relative to each other, relative to a reference frame or a set of axes, as you said, as you will. And basically, so for example, say you have your arm, say my arm is a robot arm, so we've got three joints, my shoulder, my elbow, and my my hand, the hand being the tool point, and then two revolute joints. Okay, now the keyboard is 30 centimeters away, but 30 centimeters away from what? And that's what you've got to realize. It's, let's say it's 30 centimeters away from my hand, but you've got to, you've got to understand you can't just say 30 centimeters away. Everything's a bit relative in robotics, and so you've got to say 30, 30 centimeters away from this reference frame or from that reference frame. So, yes, the keyboard is 30 centimeters away from my hand, but it's 50 centimeters away from my elbow or about 80 centimeters away from my shoulder. You guys can't see the keyboard, unfortunately. Uh, and so, basically, what transformation matrices do, they basically... Um, if you know something is so far away from one joint or one coordinate system, so each of my, each the shoulder, the elbow, and the hand would all, each have a different ref, set of reference frames or coordinates, and basically what homogeneous transformation transformations do or transformation matrices, basically if we know something is 30 centimeters away from my hand, we can then say it's the matrix. We can say okay, it's 30 centimeters away from this how far is away from this, we use these matrices to basically work out what it is. So basically what these matrices do, they go tell us how basically what, how far or what needs to, in order, what movements or displacements, rotation, um, translational uh, movements uh, need to occur to go from one reference frame to another reference frame or to another ref to the base reference frame. So we can basically uh, make everything relative to each other. Well, everything's relative to something, and then basically we can then uh, go between different reference frames fairly simply, just using these transformation matrices. Sees um, if we know what something is in one reference frame, we can then find it in the other. Hopefully, that didn't confuse you too much. Um, but yeah, I'll basically go into a few problem sets for each of these videos. So I'll bring up the first one now. Okay, so problem set one. Let's just read this. A robot arm has two joints and two links arranged as shown in the diagram below. The joints and tooltip have coordinate frames associated with them, with the origin axes arranged as shown. You must find the homogeneous transformations relating frames one and two to the base frame zero and relate point Q, which is currently referenced by frame 2, back to frame 0. Okay, and find the transformation matrix using DH parameters and A matrices. Okay, so here's our robot arm here. We've got a revolute. We've got this base reference frame, a revolute, which is a revolute joint, and we've got this prismatic joint, and we've got our tooltip, uh, which uses the second reference frame, a prismatic joint uses the first reference frame as its coordinate system. Okay, so what you must realize, we're also told there's a distance of 2 here, and this is currently set at distance 3. But you've got to realize that this distance of 3 can is actually generally a variable, um, because this is a prismatic arm, this could be extended in and out, so this value of 3 can actually change. We're also told Q... Q superscript 2, or what that means is Q in reference frame 2 is at point 1, 1, 2. So 1 in, one in the X2 direction, 1 in the Y2 direction, and 2 in the Z2 direction. Uh, one thing you just got to be aware of, and I'm just going to, and I'll mention it again throughout the thing. If you revolve uh, the revolute joint, what actually happens, the revolute's reference, the revolute's reference frame or coordinate system stays exactly how it is. It will always point in these three directions. But what will happen is that the top arm, so from here 
to here and this link thing will actually rotate and you could imagine this thing starting to go if it rotated 90 degrees perfectly 90 degrees the arm would then point in the uh, across the page rather than coming out of the page and so what actually happens is that the first reference frame will actually rotate um, so Z1 will point across the page X1 will point into the page and Y1 will still point up and then also what will also happen is this reference frame will because it's joined to this one will also rotate and so Z2 and the prismatic action will actually be along this direction and the gripper will be kind of over here um, and rather than coming out of the page it will be uh, going across the page and so Z2 will actually point to the right, X2 will point up and Y2 will be pointing out of the page. So hopefully that makes sense. So basically joint 1 or the revolute joint doesn't affect coordinate z the zeroth coordinate frame, it affects the, one, the first and the second coordinate frame. So basically we consider this to be joint 1, okay, we never have a joint 0. Um, so joint 1 affects any, any coordinate frames um, high, uh, at the same level or higher than. What I mean by the same level is the same number. So joint 1 will affect reference frame 1, 2, 3, 4, blah, 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 blah. Uh, joint 2, or in this case the prismatic joint, will affect only, uh, will affect rev uh, reference frames 2, 3, 4, 5, etc, etc. Okay, so moving on. Uh, the first thing you should always try and do, especially with homogeneous transforms, because they can be kind of painstaking, just a little bit annoying to write out matrices, uh, is try to reduce the number of repetitive calculations. So we can do that by computing H0 and H12. So they, this basically H012, the superscript, the superscript represents the base frame and this one represents what it's related to. So this one's like relating 1 to 0, relating 2 to 1. Okay, so H10 relates, if we had a coordinate in this reference frame, in the first reference frame, how would that relate to the zeroth reference frame? And H12, uh, okay, represents, okay, if we have something in the second reference frame, how, will that, how would that coordinate re, uh, be referenced in the first reference frame? So as I was explaining previously, when you actually could see my face, um, and I was talking to you, basically these homogeneous transforms relate coordinates from one reference frame to another reference frame. Uh, also to, yeah, to reduce these repetitive calculations, if we just find this one and this one, we can then use those two and multiply them together to find H02, which is what it asks for, okay, as part of it. We want to find relating frames one and two, um, both to the base reference frame, okay? Um, so with, I'm going to be using the current frame method it's a little bit more um, obvious and I find it a little bit easier to understand and how it makes sense. There's also a method called the fixed frame method. Um, you can go look at it, it's in robotics textbooks and whatnot. And um, it's slightly different, but and if you can get your head around it, it's, um, it's fine. But they're much of much as they do the exact same thing. And um, just also be aware there's multiple ways you can do these transformations, um, as, you'll, as I'll explain. Um, so I'm just doing the way that I saw how to do it. Okay, so what we're trying to basically do with these homogeneous transforms is we're trying to basically for H10, so relating a coordinate in the first reference frame to the zeroth reference frame, we need to work out how does, what sort of um, rotational and displacement um, would we need to perform on this reference frame to get it to look like this reference frame. So you notice how X0 is pointing in the same direction as Z1. Well, what we want is Z0 pointing in the same direction as Z1, X0 pointing in the same direction as X1, and Y0 pointing in the same direction as Y1. That's what I mean by the same um, orientation and looking like. So we make Z the zeroth reference frame look like the first reference frame. Okay, so if we're looking at this, to do that, the first thing what we could do, well, we want to get X0 pointing in the same direction as X1. So what we could do, we could rotate about Z0. Uh, Z0 is pointing up, so using our right-hand rule, uh, that would be a positive 90 degree transformation. That would get X0 pointing in the same direction as X1. However, we also need to perform this displacement of 2. So we also got to move up in the Z0 direction uh, plus 2. Okay, and so that's what I do first. So you notice I've done a rotation of pi on 2, or 90 degrees, 
about the current Z0 axis and moves it up to in the Z0 axis to give us something like this. So X0 will now, is now pointing in as the same direction as X1, but Z0 is pointing up and uh, currently pointing up once you've done that transformation and Y0 is pointing into the page. So we need to get Y0 pointing up and Z0 pointing across. Now when you have uh, now currently our X is uh, aligned, so generally what you do when you have something aligned, you rotate about that axis. So to get it looking, so to get it in this one then looking like this, so remember X0 is pointing here, <coughs> excuse me guys, sorry, Y0 is pointing in, Z0 is pointing up, so we simply need to rotate again using our right hand rule positively 90 degrees about our, X, uh, our new X0 axis. Okay, and so that's what I do. I rotate positively about our new new x naught axis by 90 degrees, or pi on two radians, if you will, and we get z naught pointing out, y naught pointing up, x naught pointing to the right, and that's the exact same orientation um, and displace and displacement, if you include the plus two, uh, that the first reference frame is. So we've done the same. It's now all exactly the same. So it looks the zeroth reference frame looks like the first reference frame if you apply these um, two rotations and this displacement, okay? So what we then do, there's, um, there's three rotational matrix. There's the RZ, ma RZ theta matrix, the RX theta matrix, and the RY theta matrix. They all look pretty similar, so you notice that this is the RZ uh, theta matrix. Um, just imagine pi on two was theta, so theta, 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 okay? And this is the RX theta matrix cos theta, negative sine theta, sine theta, and cos theta. Okay, there's also an RY, the uh, RY matrix, which I'm pretty sure looks like cos theta, negative sine theta, sine theta, cos theta, with like a cross in the middle with one bean in the center. But don't quote me on that. Just look at, um, at a robotics textbook or Google it for the rotational matrix. Okay, so what you do, basically, if you perform a rotation about the RZ matrix, you go find the, your RZ rotational matrix, and for the value um, of theta that you rotated, you take that to be the theta. So we've got a cot, we rotated about pi on two about our z, so we use the RZ matrix, plugging in theta equal to pi on two, or 90 degrees, and you get something like this. You do the same thing for your RX, uh, for the rotation about the X um, axes, again plugging in a value of pi on two as theta, and we get something like this, plugging in pi on two because that's what we rotated by. We then also have our displacement, so DZ2, so this is our displacement in the X, displacement in the Y, displacement in the Z, and you get 0, 0, 2, okay? Now, with the current frame method, what you simple, all you simply do is you simply, you have to find the overall rotational matrix. Um, if you only have one rotation, that's easy. If you have multiple rotations, all you have to do is multiply the first rotation that you did 